Okay, BIM for industrial production, uh, video one. And the point of this video is just to get you to set up your your model correctly. We're still talking about assembly drawings and mounting drawings. And this is going to be the main uh, theme of the semester in terms of how you organize your information. So to start off, we're going we're to talk about uh, assembly drawings on site. And we're going to continue to think about the uh, seven principles of uh, component system design. Um, so let's just kick it off straight away um, with the demonstration. We start off with the um, with the bitmap and the grid drawn on top that I've uh, I've given you on fronter. First thing we do is we're going to set up the levels. So we stretch up the grid, and then very quickly uh, we're going to copy the uh, the levels up. <coughs> Excuse me. And all the levels are at 3.2 meters, and um, so we can very quickly use the, the grid lines to uh, to copy between them. Then we create a plan view, a new floor plan uh, for each of the new levels. And there we go. You can see the floor plans have appeared. So we go back to level one, uh, and as you could see in the uh, fourth floor plan there. Some of the grid lines weren't uh, weren't generating through all the levels. So what we do is we select the grid lines and we select reset to 3D extents, and that should make the grid lines visible uh, on all plans. <coughs> so now we're ready to start uh, setting up our first uh, module. I'm going to set up a, <coughs> a modular wall type. And the important thing to remember about this modular wall type is that the tolerance, uh, the side tolerance, is uh, inherent in the wall type, which gives us uh, complete control over the tolerance uh, at a later date. If the tolerance changes, you can simply go into the air layer within this uh, modular wall type 1 and change the width of the air layer, which will allow us to, um, to change the tolerance. <coughs> this will become more clear when we uh, we place the uh, the module side by side, and you can see how the tolerance is uh, is set up. Now I'm setting up an external wall, modular wall type two, and I'm going to put uh, an external finish on it as well, so it represents uh, at least in concept uh, an external wall. So now we start to draw the walls. I'm going to choose the exterior face as the control line. Uh, I'm going to give the uh, the wall uh, an unconnected height of uh, 3,200 millimeters. And the reason we don't uh, set it to snap to the levels is that we want to be able to move these modules around. Here you can see the 50 millimeter air gap exists uh, on the edges of the of the wall. Just gonna change those walls to the new wall type. And I'm going to align it to the outside face of the inner uh, structural element of the wall. And the same over here. Now we create a floor. Again, we use the rectangle tool. I'm going to edit the type and I'm going to create a new modular floor. The reason for creating new floors, new walls, and new roofs in, in this uh, modular construction type is that we can control them at a later date. We know we've created them, so we know that how, we, um, how we're going to edit them at a later date, and we can quickly find them and um, keep the whole thing under control without using any of the, ge the generic walls or floor types. Again, I'm going to use a uh, roof type. It's important not to allow the roof to snap to level 2. You must keep it on level 1 and give it an offset from uh, the base level. So we give it an offset of 2400. Use the rectangle tool again. And draw the shape of the roof. Can I edit the type? <coughs> Excuse me. And 
background, we're going to create a modular roof type. And we're going to make it 300 millimeters. So we go to the structure and we change the structure to 300 millimeters. And select OK. Now we hold down the tab key, which means we can select all the sketch lines at once and we untick the defined slope before we accept the, the roof. And here you can see the box we've made so far. You can see the floor at the bottom is, uh, is exposed, so we want to make sure that uh, the base of the wall and the base of the floor are positioned at the same point. We do that by changing the offset. And similarly, we can see here that uh, I've made a mistake in the measurement, so we need to change the offset to 2,500 millimeters for the roof element. So that's our first modular box completed uh, in its basic form, in any case. So I'm just going to simply give it a, <coughs> excuse me, a, uh, a curtain wall. And once again, I'm going to make a new type of curtain wall, a modular curtain wall. We need to ensure that the automatically embed tick box is ticked so that the curtain wall will act like a window and create the opening within the wall for us. So we just draw it on top of the existing wall. And you can see it embeds in the wall and then we can orient it externally as we see fit. So now we go back to the 3D view, and we've got our basic box set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a group, and we're going to call this Module Type A. So this is our first product <coughs> that is going to come from the factory, Module Type A. It's very important we move the control point uh, the insertion point up to uh, a position that is useful um, and we'll see why that'll become clear uh, especially in the next video in the series I'm just going to copy the module I'm going to use the grid lines as uh, to control the distance and now you can see that the tolerance between the two structural walls is very apparent I'm going to edit the type of of the second group, and I'm going to call it uh, module type B. <coughs> now I'm just going to um, make the window smaller on, uh, on this module type B. Uh, just for the purposes of demonstration so that the difference between the groups is very uh, obvious. Once I've done that, I'm going to finish the group. And so uh, we have a module type A and a module type B, which will serve as the basis for uh, all the rest of the apartments in the scheme. I'm just going to use the copy tool to copy them across using the intersection of the grid lines as a guideline. <coughs> and the reason I copy them rather than array them is that. Uh, I can see from the very beginning that I have absolute control over the position of the modules. If you get this wrong in the initial stages, it can start to cause you uh, lots of nightmares later on in the process. So now we've copied the entire ground floor of the block we're working on anyway. So we want to uh, copy the modules up to uh, the other three floors in the scheme. Uh, tolerance now is very visible in the, sc in the scheme. <coughs> uh, later on as we get the design drawings finished we can remove that tolerance but it, at this point it's good to have it existing so you know you have to deal with it at a later date. 
So back to level one. And now we're going to uh, make a new internal wall um, just by using the ones we made already and modifying them. Duplicate, give it a new name. start to lay out the uh, internal walls as per the initial sketch. So there we go, the initial walls laid out. We're not too worried about the dimensions at this point because we can always modify them later as we do our uh, design development analysis. Going to insert some doors, and there's also a door between the groups that we need to take into account. <clears throat> now we have a choice of size as to where to put the uh, the doorway. So I'm going to choose to put it uh, where it's most seems like it's most visible on the sketch. I'm going to put it on the other module. So we're just going to make an opening on this module type A at the moment in order to allow for there to be passage between the two modules as they're finished. I'm going to make a larger opening down here so we can end up constructing um, a much larger living room when the two modules are connected. I'm just going to use the Align tool to make sure the opening aligns with the adjacent internal wall. And there we have <coughs> the initial sketch set up. Accept that, press the finish button, and the changes will then be uh, repeated across all module type A groups. So this shows you <coughs> excuse me, that you only need to design your apartments once when you're using this technique of groups. continue with this and we're just going to edit uh, module type B and add some uh, internal walls. And I'm just doing this in a very basic way just so that there's a layout that we can see um, throughout the scheme. Add a few doors. So I'm just going to ensure that the door lines up with the opening in the module type A adjacent group. And that's close enough for our purposes. So now you can see, <coughs> excuse me, the groups have been updated globally. So now we have uh, what's being <coughs> beginning to look like an apartment scheme.
just gonna make a section box so we can take a have a, we can have a look through the uh, through the model and see uh, what uh, mistakes we've left behind. And I can see straight away that I didn't set up the wall openings with the correct levels. So I'm just going to modify those. Modify the group, select the wall opening, change the base offset to zero, and change the unconnected height to 2.4 meters. And apply. And <coughs> just repeat the process for uh, module type B. Edit the group, edit the wall opening, change the offset, and change the unconnected height. Apply. And then finish the group again so that the uh, changes to the openings will uh, update throughout the project. I'm just going to change some of the view properties to make the uh, the sectional elements more clear. I'm going to make it a kind of a dark blue, and we're going to.